Good morning, fellow option traders. This is Jeff, and welcome to the Daily Scan for Wednesday, May 29th, 2013. Uh, yesterday was an unusual day, but let's take a look at what's on tap for uh, scheduled news an announcements for today. Bank of Canada is going to come out at 10 o'clock with uh, their monetary policy. Don't expect any changes there. Uh, tomorrow's a big day just because of the GDP and the jobless claims. Um, I think, though, a more telling story is going to be on Friday uh, when we come out with the uh, PMI. So um, I think that uh, yesterday consumer confidence and, and a lot of these indicators were... Uh, pretty positive, but this Dallas Fed survey, uh, manufacturing survey, was not very positive and has been reflecting some of the other manufacturing surveys in that um, inventories are increasing and production is decreasing, even though uh, the general public and the house buying um, portion of the, of the uh, public are showing a confidence in the market, I guess you might say. Uh, but underneath it all, things are not really looking all that good. All right, so um, let's take a look at yesterday and see what, uh, what happened. Um... Let me just take a peek at the ES here. I'll take a chart. Let me get back to what I was doing here. Okay, so here we have a intraday, daily, and weekly chart on the S&P 500. Here we show overnight uh, dropping pretty steadily since yesterday morning at about 10 o'clock, or at least between 10 o'clock and 11.30 was when we hit this candle here and I believe that that had to do with that uh, Dallas survey. I don't know what else might have happened during this time frame. I wasn't paying any attention to the news cycle. I know that there was another train crash um, back east someplace. But, you know, I, I don't know specifically what people are tacking this kind of surprising move here on at least it's surprising to me but when I was looking at the chart this morning I was looking over here at the weekly and this particular candle right here is called it has a couple different names but it's called an inside uh, day or an inside candle or a um, bearish harami Technically, that's what it is, is a bearish harami. And what happens is you have a nice, solid uptrend. And then you have a nice, big, green candle here. And then the next candle opens below the close of the previous candle, which is what it did here, and closes above the open of the previous candle. So, in other words, you end up with a... And it has to be a, a red candle, and at least on my chart, it has to be red. So it has to be a candle where the open is higher than the close. And it has to meet these other guidelines pertaining to the candle prior to it. Now, I don't usually put a lot of weight on, you know, uh, candlestick theory, I guess you might say. I'm more of a trend kind of a person. But when I was looking for indicators or things to, you know, show maybe what's happening out here right now, uh, at least over the last couple of days, <clears throat> I'm seeing it here in this particular set of candles. Now, the Barry Sharami needs confirmation. In other words, it needs another red candle. And we are definitely in that for this week. And we can see that with these large wicks 
that the bulls are losing right now. Now, whether that continues or not, we don't know. Okay, so let's take a look at what's going on this morning. We were up almost 100 at this time yesterday, and we are down 46 right now on the Dow. So we were up <clears throat> a half a percent or more yesterday at uh, on all major indexes. But right now, uh, things are looking a little dreary. Uh, gold is up a tad, and oil is still playing with that 95 level. All right, um, we'll take a look at our account. And every alert that I set yesterday, for those of you who caught the video before I pulled it, um, went off. And a lot of them, most of them went off in the first 10 or 15 minutes of the market's open, which was kind of what I was expecting based on what I was seeing at 6 o'clock in the morning. And because of that, I had huge distractions. And I wanted to get out of this Apple trade. I wanted to do something about this Apple. And um, I tried to do what I have done on previous trades where I just buy back the short and let the, let the long run. And then Apple flip-flopped on me. Let me show you the chart here. And it's going to cost me dearly. I'm going to eat a little crow on this one. So here's the open. Um, just went screaming up yesterday. And I was like, oh man, i got to get out of this thing. Price was right. Actually, it was flipping in and out of the money. You know, that little indicator that you get over here. That will tell you whether you have a position in the money or not. Uh, I have that turned on on my platform. It was flipping in and out of that, and I was like, okay, I got to get out, got to get out. And I got out, and then it just did nothing but sink after that, which my call, I did some calculations on it last night. I was able to uh, actually work my calculator through my tears. Um, that this particular option down here, the long that I have, which is uh, currently worth $2.95, would have to be worth $7.69 just for me to break even. So I am going to take a huge hit on this particular trade. I have some other concerns here as well. Um, now that we apparently may be getting into a a little bit of a bearish cycle. My my uh, positive delta trades are being called into question, I guess you could say. And the two that I have the most concerned about are LinkedIn and Netflix. And the reason why the Netflix number here is so big is because I have two different positions on, which is something I don't usually do, but I I did. And LinkedIn is a little bit of a problem too so I'm just going to have to keep an eye on them. Thankfully I have my insurance policies here on the root so if things go very bad very quickly uh, I have a little bit of a hedge here in these insurance policies. They're not really paying off a lot right now but remember and we've talked about this a couple of times before that um, when the rut starts to move down and we get into these sweet spots here on this double calendar, the implied volatility is going to increase as well, which is going to move these uh, red lines up. So if uh, things should go bad, I do have something to cover both accounts, both the Profit Tent portfolio and the spread account. Okay, so enough about that. We're already 10 minutes into this video. Um, I don't, so all these alerts went off yesterday, and I'm looking at my notes, and I ended up getting into Chipotle, and we'll take a look at that particular chart, and I'll show you where I'm at on that. 
and squish this down here and I'm in I decided to do a June bull put spread here and this had a 20 delta yesterday when I entered it and also Google is another one that I got into yesterday and I'll show you that and it also had about a delta 20 on that one when I got into it so those are the two new ones that I put on yesterday and every other one went off Baidu Goldman Sachs, MasterCard, Netflix, Priceline, and Visa all triggered within the first 15, maybe 20 minutes of the market open yesterday. And it was very, very distracting, and I think it contributed to the stupid move that I did on Apple, and I didn't wait like I should on Apple until 10 o'clock or later. So, um, paying the price on that puppy. I should have let it work. I should have let it work. Okay, so uh, I keep having to be retaught that lesson continuously. So, to help everybody out there, um, this particular Apple trade was a June one, which actually is uh, expiration would be a week from this Friday. I should have let it work. I should have let what was really happening with Apple be my guideline. So here we are. Well, we're kind of in a flat trend, but definitely long term we are in a downtrend. And we're sort of flat here probably was not a good idea to get into this in the first place simply because it you know we had a average moving average going up but this gap down here uh, sucked me in big mistake so don't do that I disobeyed my rules and I'm paying for it so I wish I had somebody that could watch over my shoulder and tell me not to do things like this it's just a constant battle to uh, stick to the rules so I think I'm going to uh, print my rules out and keep them out here and review them each morning before I make the video <laughs> and uh, make sure that I follow my rules all right no scan for today. I think this video is long enough. I've been rambling about feeling sorry for myself long enough. <clears throat> uh, I'm not sure that based on the way that yesterday ended up that a scan would be valid today anyway. So we're just going to skip it. I'm going to let you guys out early. So everybody thank you for watching. Have a great day and happy trading.